So now let's uh, look at uh, my hand from the top down approach. Because uh, we just talked about the thumb traveling under the palm on the side view, okay? Now, um, first thing, um, I want to talk about the palm because um, when people uh, play, not just, you know, scales, but, you know, in playing anything in general, um, there's a lack of palm awareness. What I mean is, they don't know how to control the palm, okay? So you have to control your palm. Actually use your palm to control your fingers. So how do we do that? Don't play like this, the first thing, because mm. this is not controlling your fingers at all, because you're just like doing this and then, you know, or like you push the fingers mm. to the front, you know, this is not helping. So what you want is, do this, okay? It's a little bit like a grip, okay? Like when you're holding a ball, a ball, you know? Imagine, I mean, if you don't know the feeling, that's okay, you can use, um, I ask people to use a grip like this, you know, like these kind of uh, thing to squeeze, you know, so you have, it, it doesn't have to be like really big squeeze, oh, but uh, what I mean is you have to know, okay? You know how to use your palm, okay? This is for like, you know, experiment for little kids, small, so you know, if you, there's like a little curl, okay? You curl down. So then, this generates a space underneath uh, the palm, so there's space between, like, between the palm, you know, the bottom of the palm, or the inside of the palm, and uh, the key surface. So that is space for the thumb to travel, okay? So that's very important, because uh, if you do this, uh, then there's no space to travel, okay? Then you have to pick it up. Or you don't actually have to pick up at all like this, okay? Nobody has to do this, but a lot of people do this because it is absolutely uh, wrong. Because you take a lot of time to do this and then you will hit the note from above and then not smooth and there's a sudden accent. So you don't want an accent, okay? You want to be smooth. So you want to move the thumb like this. Okay, so how do we move the thumb? So the palm, okay, people can know how to like you know, stretch, extend the palm, but they don't know how to contract, okay? Well, they, uh, there's other things I want to talk about the, the stretch, but let's talk about um, the contraction. So when I'm playing, what I'm doing is, okay, I'm, I'm travel the thumb, then you see I'm moving this part of the palm in the middle. So there's smaller gap between this, okay? You try to move it like that, okay? So what you're doing is this, da 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 da, okay? So a lot of the times is not just this. You really have to like contract, not just this part, actually a little bit of this. So like that. Move in, move in, move in, okay? Like pumping the heart. Okay, so you contract the palm so that you can move this, okay? So that's very important. So try to practice, you know, contraction. Another thing is, uh, the wrist, okay? So we talk about the wrist. Uh, people know how to pick it up, but that's actually usually too much of picking up the wrist because what you're doing is actually picking up the wrist with the forearm. And that's why you always get tied in the forearm, you know, after playing it for a while. You want to actually use the whole arm that we talk about in other videos and in my book, um, The Piano Freedom and The Technique Book. So we talk about uh, body movement, you know, uh, you have to uh, engage your body when you play, not just, you know, focus on this. Actually, this is the least you should focus on when you want to improve your technique. But I just want to like, show you the details, fine tune first, okay? So here you have to move your wrist, okay? So first of all, actually, you know, try to like see if you can move your wrist. Like it's a bounce, you know, like you're bouncing a ball, but only like, you know, you're doing it on top of the key, so like this. Okay, see so if you can do this because a lot of people don't know how to like kind of move down a little bit. When they move, the palm collapse. No, the palm is still like this and then you just kind of like, you know, bouncy, bouncy a little bit, you know, wiggle, wiggle. So that and also wrist, other than going up and down, the wrist can go sideways. So watch me when I do this. I'm not really moving this. Okay, this moves, but it's more like a, this part so I can swing. I try not to move so much here. So you can swing. So like this, we call it a finger forearm alignment. What it means is, very simple. So when you're playing the thumb, you want to align your forearm. So it's form a straight line instead of like curl. Nobody does that for the thumb, but a lot of people does that for the 
so a lot of people no nobody do that for the thumb but a lot of people do that with the uh, top fingers like the pinky uh, the fifth or the fourth okay um, people like play like this but why you want to play like this you never play the thumb like, like this you know so you want to align them so when I'm playing here we want to align this to make, make a straight line, you know, from a straight line, the finger all the way to the forearm, as much as possible. So you see my wrist actually move. So I'm kind of like this, like this. Not instead of a wave up and down, maybe think about a wave like that, sideways, I don't know. Sideways. Think about it sideways, but go do 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 this little small, small movement. easier because we align this more right but like when you go up you actually kind of align this more so like this you know like that okay so for the, the left hand is the same going up is easier right because we are going to this direction somehow it's easier because we align the top but once we go down it's always like that or oh, this hard it's not hard, like people think like left hand is harder, it's harder to play with the left hand. It's not harder, it's just because you never, like if you think about it, you always start with the right hand when you start playing the piano, and then okay, we add the left hand. So the left hand starts late, okay? So imagine the right hand starts for one year, like go to school for a year or two years first, and then okay, left hand come in, you know, start the school after one or two years. Of course the left hand always lags behind. So. What we do in our piano program, even from like the beginning, actually very important in the beginning, beginner program, we start with both hands. We start with the left hand with the right hand, okay? We don't start just the right hand. We will play, so why don't we play, yeah, and then, so you start with the left hand too, so there's no problem with the left hand, and left hand can play uh, the melody, you know? We have this in the first first book, you know, first be uh, beginner program book. I think it's in the sixth song or something like that. So we start playing the melody of the left hand. So there's no problem with the left hand. And also you read everything from the start, okay? So that's another story. But so it's the same thing. So move very smoothly, okay? Move your thumb under, move your thumb under, and contract, open contract, open, okay? Uh, oh, one more thing, uh, we talked about the palm just now, right? So, uh, how about the fingers, okay? Don't do this, okay? Like, you, like your fingers are out of control, yeah, okay? No, grab it in, a little bit, you know, like contract here, like this, okay? Like you're holding a ball or a ball, okay? So, curl in, so you don't see your fingertips, I t tell my... Uh, young students, okay? I don't see your finger. You see your fingertips, it's wrong, okay? So that's like a game, okay? Don't see your fingertips, okay? So, I mean, I mean, like, sorry, the nails, well, you don't see your fingertips anyway, but like this is more chance. So don't, you don't, you won't see your nails when you're playing the scale or actually anything, okay? If you, you see it, even like a little bit, it's wrong. Because you only see here. Like, like this is like a, this, okay? These knuckles, okay? You will see these because it's like you are on the top of the mountain and you don't see uh, the root, okay? You don't see the root or the bottom of the mountain until you, uh, you know, walk out and then, oh, okay, you know, the edge of the mountain, you look down, okay, then, yeah, I, I can see, I can see here, okay, yes, I can see here, but not from here, okay? Like, uh, when you see it, you look at your hands top down, you don't see your nails, okay? Unless you move, oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, so you should be able to do this in a slow tempo, smoothly, hands together. Well, I start with hands separately. So start with like a, uh, one octave even because you want to align. Okay, so one more thing. There's a lot of things, but one more, one last thing. You want to move fast, okay? Even when you're playing slow, in the slow tempo, your movement has to be fast, okay? You don't, because you are playing slow and then, ah, oh, okay, I'm lazy, I'm late, the thumb is late. No, you know, imagine you are waiting for a bus. You don't want to rush, okay? Maybe, maybe that's your style, but don't rush, okay? Because when you rush, what happens? Like, ah, I'm anxious. And then your hair is messed up even after you dry, bro, dry your hair, you know? You don't want that. You want to, like, nice, dress nice, be there for the occasion. You don't want to be early. You want to wait for the bus. 
okay? So you slowly, like, you see the bus coming, you know, you know and then you approach and you know, I know the stop is there. It's like don't think about this like a wave, okay? I go up and down, up and down, up and down. No, there's no hurdle. This is not a hurdle. It's not an Olympic event, or right? not a track event. This is okay, a track, but like rail track, okay? This is a rail, or like uh, you run on the on the on yeah on the track, okay? So not a hurdle, okay? No hurdle, flat, flat, okay? Like surfing or yeah, like a train, subway, MTR, okay? So over or like on the Paddle body on the water, not like diving in, okay? There's no diving. You move on the surface. You don't even have to lift, you know, just... What you do is like... So you think about your movement is this, not like down, and then I'm not doing it here, and then ooh, like that, ooh, like that. No, not at all, you just do this. Because your finger rise... Well, actually, your finger really rises when... What? You lift the note. I mean, if, if it's not holding it, then it will go up, okay? You don't have to pick it up. So that's another thing. That's a bigger thing in general about, you know, the playing technique is you don't have to pick up your fingers. Okay, that's that's very important, but we will talk about it in other videos. So, travel over the keys, okay? On top, not wave, okay? Not, woo, like that. Mm, that's a... A lot of unnecessary movement that you should avoid to uh, make your playing efficient and smooth and easy. Okay, that's what we want to do here. So I hope you enjoyed the video and understand more about how to play a smooth scales. Okay, so there's some patterns and uh, how to execute it. Um, I did a lot of uh, videos before about you know playing scales, arpeggios. Uh, but this time I think I give more precise uh, indications as to where you should look for and what you should look for and how you should uh, adjust your palm and the wrist, you know, things like that. Um, but uh, in general, um, if you can uh, adjust your body more with your scales, because once you know the patterns, okay, how do you play smoothly, maybe for one octave, uh, maybe for two octaves, but how do you you control the keyboard, okay, I want to play four octaves, right, all the way up and down, then you really have to, you know, get your body, your arm, you know, everything involved in your playing. So uh, let's talk about it next time. Cheers.